Okay, well, this is going to show off uh, my terrible um, editing skills when it comes to video. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, more or less, this uh, application or macro will download a historical documentation from Yahoo as well as the analyst estimates um, from, again, Yahoo Finance. Uh, so it's really simple. Add your ticker price. You can see that in the list, bo uh, list box on the left. Um, select your or the type of file that you want to download, um, and click save. And anyways, the files show up here, which is I guess the uh, the proper thing that you want to see. So it's not bad, you know. Let's just uh, wait until this is done. Oh my god. This is taking a while. And here we go. That was done. Holy smokes. One, two, three. <laughs> Hold your breath. <laughs> so we're going to open up one of the historical documentation for one of the funds. That we selected, and we're just adding a simple, uh, you know, start candle t uh, candlestick chart. Well, that's it. So you know, we got some data. Obviously, you could probably take this and you could put this into an SQL server or an Access database, and then build up on your uh, your analysis. So we're gonna go through how to build this. Real simple. Um, first things first, add your HTML uh, reference. I can't actually remember if. I use this or not, but I just added it just in case. <laughs> so I'll add that reference. I insert a user form, and we're actually going to go soon in fast forward mode to add the <laughs> to grade this. So play some fast music. Uh, so I had a couple of frames, uh, three buttons. Buttons going to be for uh, add, remove, and remove all for your stock ticker. One button is going to be used for your file. Uh, location picker, and the other one's going to be the button to action the uh, the macro. There's two option buttons. One is for one file, one is for the other file, and yeah. So <laughs> good luck. So this right here, don't worry too much about this. Um, I'm going to put all the coding uh, for the application. Um, available, so uh, don't really worry about this. So right now we're just linking the one of the comma buttons for the file folder pick. So it's pretty simple. So dim fd is an object. Uh, set fd as application file dot, dot dialog, and then an MSO file dialog folder picker. So what the remaining folder will be is uh, going to be your string location. To where you can save your files. So, pretty simple. If fd dot show equals negative one, then file name equals uh, fd dot file selected uh, bracket bracket one. Now, right now we're just adding functionality to the uh, the buttons. Add, remove, and remove all. Uh, super exciting. Um, you know, it's pretty basic. We're just doing basic manipulation of the list box, which takes advantage of the uh, the list box add item. Uh, you know, very complicated stuff. And then uh, one of the cool things that you can do is the save settings and get settings uh, functionality, um, which is pretty cool. So basically, it will remember a string of text for you um, if you call on it. Um, it'll save this. Actually, to be honest, someone told me where this gets saved, no, but I can't remember. So, uh, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> so here's the save setting. So basically, you have three string locations, and then what you want to save. So I choose Joe's history download. Um, settings and jazz because everyone likes jazz. <laughs> okay. 
All right, last button we're going to add is the remove all button. Um, this is just uh, your list box dot clear. Um, so that will remove everything. And then what we're doing is we're calling our save function again, which just saves all the items in our string location from our list box. Uh, so we can recall it when we initialize our, uh, our user form. Sorry, this is, I know this is super exciting and we're five minutes in of, I'm sorry, we're so sorry, an 18 minute video. Um, but I promise it will be fun, it will make sense. And uh, once you'll be able to use it, you can download some data with uh, no problem at all. So we are initializing our user form. So right now we're adding a default uh, value for option box. And then we are making our frame four and two uh, not visible. We're getting our string value from our settings. And what we're doing is we're splitting that array and populating the list box with our ticker values. So this is the main uh, down, or one of the two main download codes um, for getting the values from Yahoo. Okay, um, we're gonna slow this down a little bit. So define uh, Internet Explorer as object. Uh, define your download string as string. Dim your val1, val2 as a string. And this is just going to be error caching in case something goes haywire and you need to uh, error trap it. So we're going to set up our loop to the amount of stock tickers in our list box. So pretty, uh, pretty simple. So Q equals zero because the integer for the list box is zero to user form list box list count minus one. So our first value is going to be the first instance in our loop. So user form one dot list box dot list bracket Q bracket. We're going to create our download string which is actually just a, uh, a website link from Yahoo Finance. And the great thing with Yahoo Finance is their, um, their data location is uniquely coded to their stock ticker. So it makes it really simple uh, to grab data. Thank you, Yahoo Finance. I greatly appreciate it. You're the best. So um, you can find this on Yahoo, but um, HTTP forward slash forward slash ichart.finance.yahoo.com slash table dot CSV question mark S equals. Now, one thing that I missed, which is kind of funny, is make sure you add the val1 to your download string. Okay, so download string should equal the Yahoo Finance and val1, because <laughs> I'm an idiot, and I forgot to put it. So, uh, sorry. So this is actually the, uh, the coolest part of the macro. Um, I don't know how it does it. I don't know why it does it. It probably has to do something with magic and gemstones and um, I'm sure, I'm sure there's something totally wild about this that I have no idea why it works. All I know is that it does, which is, I guess, half the equation. <laughs> um, so I'm defining a win HTTP rec as an object set, a, uh, win HTTP rec as a Microsoft HXML HTTP. I'm gonna open my download string. Okay, so it's open, quotations, get, download string, false, quotations, quotations. And then I'm going to send this. So win HTTP 
rack.send my URL equals win HTTP dot response body if win HTTP rec dot status equals 200 then and if and then we're going to build up our stuff inside of this oh. So we're creating an Adobe stream. Or a D A R S with A D O D B dot stream. And we're almost done putting this together. So again, don't worry about this. You don't need to. Just check below and the majority of the macros, actually all the macros, are in the text there. Um, again, I, I don't know if the quality of the video is the best. Uh, if it's great, if it's crap, uh, that will be up to you. Um, you know, I had to do this kind of in a rush. So, you know, this is just me making excuses for myself for putting up uh, a potentially terrible video. So, <laughs> um, you know, terribly sorry. So, last little bit, we're linking our our uh, our path name to our user form text, which is what we utilize the folder picker for to pick the file location. Um, so, our object is string dot save to file save file path with the file name dot csv two is overwrite and now we're closing our connection and this is the main uh, download function for the historical data so basically it's just taking a a file save link and then communicating on the back end uh, to download it now that could be wrong <laughs> totally could be wrong. Uh, I just say that, especially when I don't understand how things work. And people who know less than I do, uh, just like they nod. They're like, "Yeah, this is this is totally cool. This totally works." <laughs> and yeah, so we're almost done with this one. The stock analysis um, function we're gonna get to after. Um, I'm just going to post that online because I didn't want to bore you guys with such a long, long video. Um, so right now I'm just, just creating a function to replace all the special characters in my file name string just so there's no issue downloading um, depending on the file name. So to find special characters as string, sp is going to be a string but it's going to contain all our special characters. So sp equals um, all the special characters you can think of. I probably missed one. but you know, what are you going to do? Our delimiter here is going to be a space, and then when we split the string to create our array, um, we're going to um, use um, the, that delimiter. And then we're going to cycle through the length of our array um, and just use the simple replace function to take away all of the special characters and replace them with blank spaces. Um, I might have been an idiot. Yeah, it looks like it. So make sure your, so right now special characters is not an array. Um, so dim special care, make sure there's an open bracket, close bracket after that. Um, so you can actually have that array populated. But even if you even if you start the macro, it's going to point it out and letting you know that the special characters is not an array. So again, this is just me being ridiculous. So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. 
so i equals zero to a u bound of our loop or sorry our our array which is going to be special characters and the new value is going to replace the old value um, of the characters okay so name one is the file name string that we're getting from our save location or file name for me and removing that and then at the end once it's removed all the special characters um, we then have our response. So this is again just a final quick video of what it's going to be, how it works. Uh, hopefully you like it. If you don't like it, man that sucks. Really sorry uh, for wasting your time. Uh, anyway, you can watch it, don't watch it. Ciao!